Hey everybody, Jake here from Bearded Gear, and uh, I've got a quick one to do for you today. This is going to be my first impressions of the Spyderco Gale Bradley 2. Uh, this knife, if you've been following my unboxing or scale swap video, you'll know has already undergone a bit of a transformation. Um, it is now wearing these micarta scales from Sharp Dress Knives. These are the natural micarta. I decided I'm going to stick with these. <laughs> I really like the way that these look. He also sent some OD green micarta scales because I wasn't sure which I wanted and he said whichever one I didn't end up keeping uh, because I was going to be reviewing them um, I could give to one of you guys. So I'm going to be doing a giveaway of sorts. I still don't know I'm going to do that, so don't ask yet how that's going to work, um, whether that'll be just here on YouTube or on Instagram or for my Patreon patrons or, I don't know, got to figure that out. But what I do have figured out, that was bad, <laughs> what I do have figured out is how much I'm liking this knife so far. So I've carried this knife uh, two whole days already, and I was going to try to shoot this tomorrow if I could get outdoors and do it in the canyon, but... Um, once it gets past this time frame, then it kind of stops being a first impressions, doesn't it? This one's already a little bit of a interesting first impressions because I owned this knife before. I had a Spyderco Gale Bradley too, um, maybe two years ago, roughly, something like that. And I liked the knife, but I wasn't in love with the knife for a couple of reasons. And I was having some rusting issues with it, so I ended up, I think in my unboxing, I said I did a force patina, I misspoke. Um, I did an acid etch, I, I dipped the knife in ferric chloride. Um, and it turned out pretty good, but I just, I wasn't infatuated with the knife. But something happened after <laughs> I sold that knife, and it's been one of those knives that I've just kind of missed from time to time. And the more that I've seen them, especially when I've seen photos of GB2s that have been scale swapped and are wearing micarta, it's really made me want another one. So I'm glad I picked this one up. I'm, I'm enjoying it a lot. And it's living up to kind of the way I built it up in my mind after selling it, those times when I did miss it. Um, I don't think I was wrong to miss it. I think this is a, an excellent, excellent Spyderco. So let's talk about my experience so far without going too super in depth because there will be a full review still to come. Um, but so far, the important things uh, to mention are that I think one of the reasons why I'm liking the knife so much more this time are A, the scales. These sharp dress knife scales on here are a big difference in my opinion compared to the factory G10 with the carbon fibered layer. Those stock scales don't feel bad in the hand. I don't dislike them per se, but they don't feel great either. And something about me just knowing that <laughs> there's G10 hidden under that carbon fiber just kind of gets under my skin a little bit. And it's not the worst material in the world. In fact, I like G10 and I like carbon fiber. I just wish they'd pick one. And I know a lot of people say that, and it's a very nitpicky thing, but I'll tell you what, I can confidently say that I vastly prefer these, both in feeling and in just the way that they look. I feel like this knife looks excellent with these scales on it. I really like the way that this micarta looks on this knife. With the black hardware, I think it's uh, it looks really, really good. You get the contrast of the satin on the blade. It works well for me. So the scales have made me like it very much. That was A, right? B is this pocket clip. When I had this knife the first time, I didn't try swapping the clip. And I should have. I had swapped clips on other Spydercos at that point. I should have known that putting a deep carry clip on it would have made me like it more. And it has. The way that this knife carries compared to what I remember of how it carried the first go around, I like this knife a lot in pocket so far. Um, it's a good weight. It's not too heavy at all. In fact, it feels relatively lightweight for the amount of capability I feel that I get out of this knife. Um, yeah, the weight is good. The profile is good. It's not overly thick. It's not sharp anywhere. There's no flipper tab that's sticking out. Uh, it's just a nice, pleasant knife to have in pocket, especially with the deep carry clip on it. This one happens to be an MXG gear deep carry clip. If you watched the clip or the scale swap video, you'll have seen me put this one on as well. This clip lived on my Scorpion PM2 for a long time. 
and then I stole it off of the Scorpion PM2 to put on here, and I took the clip that was on my Avocado, or Rec PM2, onto the Scorpion PM2, because my Rec PM2 got a new clip, which is the one that I had wanted for it all along. It's the FDE Lynch clip. Anyways, this clip on here makes a big difference. Um, a Lynch clip or an MXG gear clip, in my opinion, you can't go wrong with either one. This is just the one that I kind of had available to it, and I thought suited the vibe and the lines of this knife fairly well, but it works great. So those are the two things that have really made me appreciate it more than the first time. Now, one thing a lot of people have been recommending that I do and saying that they've been doing on theirs is uh, a solve for one of my biggest and pretty much everybody who I've watched the videos of or talked to about this knife. The thing that most people kind of get hung up on with this knife is the access to the lock bar. The liner lock itself, where you go to push against to disengage, you'll see it has a little bit of kind of jimping on there. And the jimping is a little bit sharp and kind of unpleasant. It's not, I mean, it does give you more grip for sure. And you need it here because the space that you have to jam your thumb in there and disengage that lock is just, it's a very narrow little channel you've got there. So what some people have been saying that they do is they'll take a Dremel to the liner on this side and just relieve out a little bit of that material so that you can get in there a little easier. I haven't done that to mine yet. This one is still factory in that regard. I'm thinking about doing it. I might. We'll see. But another thing that I'm curious to see, see how bad I just slipped off of that. I'm curious to see by the end of my week of having this in pocket, um, I'm sure I'll keep carrying it beyond that week, but uh, by the time I'm ready to do my full review on this is how accustomed I will get <laughs> to the difficulty of accessing that lock bar. Um, if I'm swapping knives like super frequently, then it'll still be an issue. But since I've been carrying this like pretty much consistently since I got it as a primary, um, I've found that I've gotten used to it to a pretty good degree and it's not a trick, it's not a hack, but what I do <laughs> to open the knife is really just kind of, I don't know if it'll show very well, I just kind of jam like the meat of my thumb down into there and really just shove as much flesh, <laughs> that's what she said, as I can between there and move it over that way. And it works. Um, is it ideal? No. Every other liner lock that I own is more pleasant <laughs> to close than this one is. So that may be a mod that I do, but we'll see by the end of a week if I just feel like I've gotten used to it enough that it doesn't bother me. And to be honest, I'm still really enjoying this knife. Like, that's kind of the, the fatal flaw of the knife that a lot of people point out, and it's absolutely a flaw. But for me, it's not fatal. Um, it does not ruin the knife for me. I wish it was better but there are so many other things that I really like about this knife. So, so far, my experience with it, I've already said, carry is very good. I'm liking the way that it carries, especially with these scales in this clip. Excellent in and out of pocket. Um, ergos, quite good for me, especially with these scales. I, it feels good in the hand. There are no hot spots. There's nothing that's rubbing me the wrong way. The only jimping that there is, is just a real small little patch of jimping right here, kind of on the thumb ramp. And it's not overly aggressive jimping. It's not trying to cut my finger off. I'm fine with this jimping right there, especially because they were tasteful and just put a very little bit of it. Um, everything else about the knife, very smooth, very pleasant, in a variety of grips, this knife feels very good. It's not a super neutral handle. I mean, it's pretty neutral though. You can see there's a little bit of shape going on here. We've got kind of a primary finger groove up here and then there's, it's, it's not just a rectangle, but that being said, it is fairly neutral. So putting it in a variety of grips is rather comfortable. Um, yeah, so far with cutting, I think that's honestly my favorite part of the GB2 is the way that this knife cuts. It's M4 blade steel, which I love. I am a big fan of M4. I really like the performance I've gotten out of M4 in the past. And specifically here, with this hollow grind, the thinness that they're able to get down to right at the edge, it's a, just such a good slicing blade. I feel like one of the things that I actually did like about the Sabenza when I tried it 
um, was the fairly simple drop point blade shape with a good hollow grind. This, this does that. It's a nice, simple blade shape. There's nothing crazy going on here. We've got a little bit of a swedge up here. Um, but other than that, as spider cos go, it's just fairly simple. I mean, we've got the hump for the hole. <laughs> uh, but if you imagine this knife with thumb studs, this would be a pretty vanilla looking blade to some eyes. Um, but the way that it functions and goes through material, the edge that came on it, I mean, Tai Chung does really good edges for Spider Co. Um, and this one is no different. It's a very good factory edge. It's quite sharp, shaves for sure. Um, in fact, I'm missing two small patches of arm hair over here because I keep testing it just because I enjoy cutting with this knife. Um, it goes through cardboard excellently. I've done some zip ties already. It's done great on zip ties. I knew from having this knife before that I liked <laughs> the cutting performance, and that was probably the thing that I missed most about it. And it just, it really, it lives up to my memory <laughs> of how good it was. It's an excellent blade. It really, really is. It's not an overly thick blade stock to begin with, and they've worked with it just masterfully here. Um, I quite, quite enjoy cutting with this knife. So, um, yeah, I guess those are kind of my first impressions. So far, it's carrying really well. It's cutting well. Um, the ergos are working well for me. Uh, I will say that compared to a, a factory version and the factory scales with the factory clip, um, I probably wouldn't feel as positively about this one. But I knew that if I was going to get another one, that I'd be doing these things to it because these are my preference. I just did a video on knife modding and I, I, I talked a little bit about a lot of things, but one of them was uh, on some knives, it's nice to make it really suit you. I liked this knife in its factory configuration, but I just, I, I border on love it. We'll see, maybe I'll end up declaring that I love this knife, but I, I like it so much more, absolutely, by making these little tweaks to it. Just. Mm, so much better. So those will be my first impressions. I've got a lot more that I kind of could start spewing out about it, I'm sure, um, but I'll save a lot of my thoughts for the full review and we'll see if anything changes, if I end up finding something I like less about it, something I like more about it, something I didn't know about it. That will all be in the full review. And uh, in the meantime, thank you guys for checking it out with me. This is a, this is a good one.